Hi, I'm Mark Kaplan, and I'm at the Division of Medical Ethics at the NYU Langone Medical Center in New York City. Ayana Lucas just got a third heart transplant, and that's great for her, and it's exciting for her family. She is eight years old, and pediatric heart transplants are very, very rare. Happily, children do not die in motorcycle accidents and diving board accidents and other circumstances that produce organ donors. So that's the good news. The bad news for people like Iana Lucas is there just aren't that many organ donors available when you need a new heart. She definitely did need a heart and in fact got a transplant. However, it failed. She went right to the head of the transplant list, the national organ system that we maintain by the United Network for Organ Sharing, and she got a second heart. But that heart didn't work. In fact, it failed really to pump much at all. Back on a heart-lung machine, she went, and a third heart became available, and she got it as the sickest, most desperate person in the United States. Her physicians at Seattle Children's Hospital fought very hard to get these hearts for her, and it's hard not to do anything but celebrate the fact that she's still here and she was able to be rescued. But there is a tough, tough moral issue when somebody gets three heart transplants, even a child. The third and fourth heart transplant statistics are not good. What happens is you get a heart, then you get another one. Your body starts to build up antibodies or resistance to tissue that's not from your own body, and it's likely to attack the next heart. So survival statistics after two tries really start to drop drastically, maybe down to 10% of people survive a year or more. And if you get to a fourth transplant of a heart or kidney or other organ, they almost drop to zero. So from the point of view of the physicians taking care of her in the Seattle Children's Hospital, they're going to fight to get every resource they can. There's no doubt that what they consider the right thing to do is to get hearts for their patients. And if they could get five or six or seven, I suspect that's what they try to do. But is that the right use of hearts? Because while Iana got hers, somewhere there's a kid waiting who isn't going to get a heart, who's not going to get a first chance perhaps with much better statistics because we're trying to rescue a particular little girl who's in dire circumstances. So the tough moral issue is, if the doctors are going to try and get their patient all the resources they can, should the system ever set up a rule that says, after a certain number of transplants, you can't get any more, we're going to give them to others. Now, I think the system has to do that, and I know that's harsh to say, but probably after transplant number three, the chances of anyone surviving, even this little girl, are so poor that it makes more sense to let some other child who hasn't had a chance at any hearts get a chance. I think if you turn to doctors to make that decision at the bedside, they won't do it, they can't do it, they're not going to abandon their patient, and they're going to be good advocates for their patient. The only way we're going to limit the number of hearts that this little girl or anybody can get is if the system has a rule that says, after X number, we're not sending any more hearts to you. We've got, uh, got to give other people a chance. Now, I think that's the right thing to do if we value efficacy, if we want to save the most lives using the scarce supply of hearts for kids that we've got. That said, it's a lesson about how we need to think about allocation of scarce resources. If you go to the bedside, you can't really ask doctors to say, I'm not going to try anymore with my patient. We don't want a doctor like that. Who would? We want a doctor who's going to do everything to try and save us. But if we want to make the best use of scarce or very, very expensive resources, we need a system that can exercise some control regionally and nationally over what resources can be accessed, over what resources can be used. We don't have that now, but the case of this little girl in Seattle should make us think about whether we want to create such a system in the future. I'm Art Kaplan at the Division of Medical Ethics at NYU Langone. Thanks for watching.